God's good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I am very, very excited about tonight. Um, it was kind of like a last-minute thing last week. Um, just, just so you know, because I did announce Faith Moscato being around. She is going to be here next week. Um, so we can get to know Faith a little bit. Pastor in our network, and she's such a connector. If you ever listen to Pastor Chris talk about it, it's, she has this way of bringing people together, bringing fellowships together, and um, we'll also be with Gene and Robert Tringal next week. So it'll be a great week. Um, but tonight, we have Brother Didiers here from South Africa. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming in tonight and, and doing this. Um, I think that um, what Mark had just said about being fierce in making in driving with some of your decisions, when you listen to some of the things that are going to be said tonight, um, make decisions and be fierce about them. Don't back off. You know, PC is also with it. This is this is this is gonna be just a crazy night because of these two. I, I my heart is full of so much honor, especially for Big Papa. I this is like this is a moment. I want I wanted to interview him at the very end and talk about tribe. So I I do have a couple questions about tribe for him. Finding your tribe in the local church, but. I am I'm, I'm very honored to stand here and be able to ask you questions that you can just fire out the answers. So before we do that, um, tonight we're also going to start um, we're also going to start signups for our small groups. So we took the last two months here and we talked about local church and tribes. Tonight. Um, I want to do some small group signups. Uh, it's, we did it back in July for like two weeks. And um, people were really, really touched and really moved by the small groups. And so we want to do that again. We want to take two months, November, December. We want to gather together in, a, in somebody's house. It's the same, I, I believe it's, it's the same leaders, maybe the same host families. So what we did is we deleted everybody from the groups and you have to re-sign up. You have to make a decision and be fierce about it. And not just be fierce about the small group, but bring your friends. What, what I'm trying to do is I, I want you to bring friends and people that maybe they won't come to church. They're scared they're going to get struck by lightning or something bad's going to happen if they walk into a church. But they don't feel that way walking to somebody's home over some cookie and donuts and coffee and teas. I want to take these two months, especially inside the holiday seasons, and invite people out. Okay, so we're going to keep the groups between 12 and 15 people, but that's excluding the visitors. Okay? So if you have someone, bring them, and then in January and February, we're going to do cafe nights like we usually do with testimonies and word. And we want testimonies of healing. We want testimonies Is this thing cutting in and out, or am I just holding too far away from my face? <laughs> so, check, 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 check. Bad mic. Wow, an SM58 went bad. That's like a Sherman tank going bad. Wow. All right, so. The small groups, though, I just, I just want to just flex the importance of the small groups. It's, please sign up. Um, Katrina's back there. She's got Violet. Wave your hand. Where's Joe? Joe's right there. Wave your hand around. So if you, if you want to sign up tonight and you know the group that you want to be a part of, please go see one of them. There's some Realm Champions that are going to sign you up inside of the groups to get you, uh, to get you signed up. Part. Okay? So... Without further ado, I want to invite Pastor Chris and Didi are up. We're just going to kick this thing off. So we're going to be, um, yeah, no, 
Go for it. Big, <laughs> we bought that love seat just for Big Papa. So, so we're about to break in to the prophetic conference. Uh, it's called the prophetic conference. I'm sorry. We're about to. Is it the prophetic conference? Yeah. It is. <laughs> I have so many notes just scrolling inside of my brain right now, uh, because because it's talking about unveiling the apostolic. And so we have some questions tonight about the apostolic. Um, and we want to kind of give like maybe like a sneak peek into, um, into the conference this weekend. So um, before we do that, though, I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask um, Pastor Chris, you often, before we get into the apostolic side, talk about the tribe. Because you because it's it's lingo that I've learned from you. It's we don't often hear tribe. We hear church, we hear local church, my fellowship, but there's there's a stress on the tribe that came out of you, and a, a good stress. That it was about finding your tribe. So so what is the difference between like finding a church and finding your tribe. Right. Well, I could use this. Uh, is this uh, uh, so? In the mind of the culture we live in, you drive by and you see a building with glass, stained glass, and even some people make religious ceremonial gestures as they walk by because they they see the building, the church as as the place God dwells. Mm -hmm. and they don't relate to the fact that Jesus in John chapter 14 said that I and the Father will come and make our home inside of you. So you're looking past where he dwells to a building where he does not dwell because he says he does not dwell in buildings and paved with hands. So that whole cultural mentality that's been handed down to us, especially in America where we are, um, doesn't even understand what tribal life is about. So if you go to Malawi where we have all the churches and everything, um, you quickly learn about tribal that you can't even survive in those tribes, uh, in those communities, in those societies, unless you have their extended family. So they have to have their mother, father, their sister, brother, aunts, uncles. And there's an extension of family that takes place there that actually they help each other plant crops, they help each other harvest the crops, they help each other gather water, they help each other take care of the kids and all these things. So it's more of a community effort in raising the whole family. So what it does is it takes a huge amount of stress, which their stress is probably 100 times higher than ours because we have so much provision and everything's available. We get upset if Wegmans is out of milk. You know, it's like they, they might get upset if they've gone a month without milk. You know, and I think yeah. the average Malawi eats meat twice a year. Uh, so what happens is because they, they do life together, they're stronger. Mm -hmm. And they're, there's, a, there's something there that is so precious and beautiful. There's a lot of other things they need to work on. But you can see that in the tribal mm -hmm. atmosphere. It's not just me fighting the devil. It's not me fighting battles on my own. It's me seeing my life in the body of Christ, in yeah. Jesus Christ. And so... The body of Christ goes beyond my church, that facility, that place that we gather. It goes into worldwide. This is the this is the arms, the arm, the hands, the legs, the feet of Christ, the body, and every member or part is not individuals. These are whole ministries and, and people groups and movements. And when you realize you're you're a part of this much larger um, thing called. Uh, the family of God. So within the family of God, you can't relate to the whole world. I can't relate to people on the other side of the earth or over in Europe or even down in Texas. So we're right here. And within every people group are tribes. So if you were in Israel uh, back in the days of the law, you'd be walking down the street, someone would say, hi, who are you? Say, oh, I'm so-and-so of the tribe of Benjamin, of the clan of such and such mm -hmm. and of the my father is this person and your, their identity would be family tie all the way to be so they saw their connection to the kingdom of God as a family lineage in a tribal connection so 
even when you went into the tabernacle, you go into the first part and the lamb stand, the table of showbread, and the altar are there. And it's important to make note of the fact that nobody was allowed in the tabernacle except family members. So only the sons of Levi, God says, only family members are allowed here, sons of Levi, which was an indicator of what would be like about us as a tabernacle of God. It's only about family. It's not about everybody. It's about family. So as you go in, you see the lamb stand, the table of showbread. Nobody but family could go in there, first of all. And then if you look at the lamb stand, that's about the church and what it represents, the light of God and the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the spirit of God, the spirit of the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, spirit of, um, of the fear of the Lord. All that is the lamp and the light of God. And then over is the table of showbread. Well, think about what that table is. That table has 12 loaves of bread on it, one from each tribe. And because God was going to shine his countenance on the loaf, and therefore it would rest upon each and every member in society. So the only way you personally, individually, could have the presence of God shine upon your life correctly was by being connected to your tribe. So when you were a part of making that loaf with your tribe, and that was set in the presence of God, God's countenance would shine upon that family tribe, that whole clan, and that whole father's household, and all the kids. And then everything you put your hands to was blessed because you were connected tribally to your family. And we can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I was trying to say last week, but I can't say that. So... <laughs> When he was telling me this in the kitchen, I was just staring, I was just standing there like starry eyed, and I'm thinking, I gotta be able to describe it. We have to be able to talk like this. We have to be able to describe these things to people to help them through. Because inside the tribe, what like what I'm hearing inside the tribe is 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 the fivefold. So you, you have each tribe has the fivefold, and those gifts are being distributed and used inside of that. Inside of the tribe, you know. Um, did you want to say anything on, on the tribe? And we've just been talking about like local church, finding like local church and the power of the local church. And then this month we switched over to like finding your tribe. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. It's great to be here with you all. Yeah. It's really great spending time with you. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, tribe also speaks about unity, you know, um, because every tribe's got an assignment. And it's got a specific purpose that it needs to establish on the earth. And the kingdom of God is found in the realm of the Holy Spirit. That's where the kingdom of God is found. It's in Romans chapter 14, verse 17. So when God starts moving in a tribe, he will put pressure on that tribe in a way <laughs> to expand and to grow. And wherever there's growth, there's joints. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because like... Uh, Pastor Chris was saying about, you know, we are the hands and the feet and of Christ on this earth. Um, but joints cannot exist without loyalty and love. Mm. So this brings it all together. And so, in other words, we need to be loyal to the commission of Christ and loyal to the people that God has placed in authority in the tribe, in the church. And sometimes... Um, our, you know, we'll experience that our loyalty will take us further than our common sense. You know, so God didn't call us to be loyal only when it goes well, <laughs> because, I mean, uh, loyalty never gets tested when it goes well. It's when things go, feels like things go south and pressure is being put on. But the more the pressure, the more the expansion, the more the growth um, the deeper the character and the deeper the integrity and the greater the challenge will press us into Christ. Yeah. Mm. So we can draw nourishment from, fr uh, from Christ so that we become stronger and stronger and grow from glory to glory so that we can experience the... We can press into and allow God to reveal the realms of God in a greater way in our lives. Yeah. If I can say it that way. Wow. Um, you said in, uh, I just wrote down a quote from your book, Burden of Betrayal. And um, it, it says, um, 
He said, if God's taking the church worldwide in a new direction, we need to submit to our leadership without requiring full understanding and agreement. That's a, that's a big statement, right? I mean, because we're, we're, we're expected to let go and trust and, and, and be loyal. So can you, like, further that statement? So, like, for um, what would you say to the, to the people about, about that statement, about um, submitting to your leadership without requiring full understanding and agreement? Um, you know, I gave my life to the Lord when I was 17 years old. Today, I'm 51. Um, the person that led me to the Lord was Pastor Theo Vormerans. Um, I just visited him a few days ago in San Antonio. So, you know, just like you don't get to, to choose your natural father, you don't get to choose your spiritual father or mother. God chooses them for you. So God puts you in a house for a specific purpose. You know, and it doesn't matter who your father, your spiritual father, or your spiritual mother is, they'll never be perfect. <laughs> because you're not perfect either. Eh? So as long as there are not moral issues and there are not those kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and they are showing godly character and God, godly integrity, and they are always, you know, pushing forward the kingdom of God and revealing the character of Christ. I mean, it's such an honor to, to serve people like that, you know. And when leaders make mistakes and they repent and they ask for forgiveness, I mean, that's the leader I still would want to walk with. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is. So um, God places us in a, in a home, in a spiritual house for a specific purpose. And those spiritual parents that has been set by God in authority over your life, has something in them that you need to reach your destination. Mm. They have something in them that you need to reach your destination. That's good. And if you don't serve them, you may abort the plan of God that God has for your life. Wow. That's just the way it is. So you can look at, you know, you're not going to stand, the day you leave, you know, I've, I've gone through stuff in my life. You know, in, in regards to even family, blood family. You know, people would say, yes, blood is thicker than water. Well, spirit is thicker than blood. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You know, at the end of the day, when I'm going to be in heaven, I'm going to be standing with my spiritual fam family in heaven. <laughs> I'm going to be, because I'm in a tribe. I'm in the kingdom of God. And I know that God has placed me there for a specific purpose and a specific ass assignment. So I want to tap into that fullness. And you know, when God has given us spiritual parents, He didn't give us spiritual parents to fix us. He gave us spiritual parents to father us. Mm. And so when God gives your spiritual father and your spiritual mother an assignment, a project, it's all about you coming into that project and understanding the heart of God better. Because God, you know, God... Just like Moses, when God called Moses to go and get the children of Israel. Moses obeyed God, got the children of Israel out of Egypt, okay, and led them through the wilderness to take them to the promised land. But Moses' relationship grew so well with God and so strong with God that he would say to God, God, if you don't go with us, I'm, standing, I'm staying right here. I don't care what the project is. Mm. <laughs> I don't care what the assignment is. I've seen your heart. And you are more important to me than, your, than the assignment. So in other words, God chooses an assignment to reveal himself in a greater way to, because God loves the journey. Mm. So God loves the journey that you are on in this tribe. <laughs> and he's designed it specifically for you. Yeah. And, and you know, when you move with under an, 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 a, an, a, an apostolic anointing, you are going to be challenged, man. That's for sure. It's, an apostolic anointing will put pressure on you. An apostolic anointing will put pressure on you that will put a demand on you to grow and to reveal the character of Christ in your life. 
or you're going to embrace it or you're going to reject it. Yeah. Because an apostolic anointing is there to break the soil. It's there to break the ground and it's there to lay, lay foundations. So that it's solid foundations. So that the church can be built on those foundations. And at the end of the day, the mandate of an apostle is to keep the head connected or the body connected to the head, which is Christ. That's yeah. his mandate. Amen. And so yeah. there's, there's, there's protection and there's surety and there's that confident assurance that when you serve under an apostolic anointing as God has placed it on the face of this earth, through men who he has commissioned, through men and women who he has commissioned for this work, if you serve under that, you can expect that God's going to draw much out of you. And there's a Christ-likeness that will come out of you in a tremendous way if you give your, your, um, your willingness to work with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. I've answered you. So we much. just shifted gears and brought right, he brought right into the apostolic. So that direction that he was talking about in the book is the apostolic. So, Big Papa, what, what, do, you see, what do you see different in the apostolic um, to how the traditional church works? I, first of all, God never submitted his church to pastors. That it is church to the fivefold ministry. Mm. Clearly in the scriptures, he chose apostles first, but not only. He then, you know, of course, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the equipment of the saints. So God's saying the only way the saints are going to be equipped is by these five anointings coming upon every single individual. So if you just take one of those anointings and put it on individuals, they'll just become, have that influence in them, but not the other four. And that's where we get territorialism. Like if you have a single pastor, there's no apostolic, no prophetic, no evangelistic. What happens is that it becomes territorial because they're protecting and guarding, and they haven't been touched by those other anointings themselves. So we first of all got to get all of our ministers touched by all five anointings so that they don't become territorial. Or you could have an evangelist who he wasn't touched by the apostolic or by the teacher or by the pastor, and so he comes in and he says, all right, what are you people doing sitting here? Get out there on the street. Get people saved. And he disrupts the house of God rather than bringing inspiration into the house of God. So he needs to be under the pastoral because the pastoral anointing, what it does is it brings comprehension with all the saints. You don't see yourself as an individual. You see yourself as a part of something. But then the apostolic sees the worldwide global mission of God from the beginning of time until the end of, time, until the end of our days is sees what the culture of heaven is mm -hmm. and really is after that. So if you think about it, if, if you have churches that are not connected to the apostolic vision, what happens is they're individually producing only the anointing they have and therefore disconnected from the great global mission and project that God has. Mm -hmm. And so they're really not even interested in inspiring every single individual to become to fullness and to manifest their gifts and to become a factor in touching this whole entire planet. They're really after growing a congregation and keeping everybody happy and in order and marriages and, and burying people and getting them through this life so that they can go to heaven. But there's nowhere in the Bible that ever suggests that we should try to get through this life and go to heaven. There's not even anything in the Bible that says we should go to heaven. That's another part of the apostolic. It doesn't tolerate false doctrine. Mm -hmm. And I think what happens is right now we're in a season where there's so many false doctrines that are normal, common, everyday doctrines in the church. We're not against the churches, but we want to correct those doctrines because those doctrines are leading the church into dark places. So people are just trying to get to the rapture to get out of here or get to heaven someday instead of ruling and reigning on the earth, which is the mandate which we have. Yeah. And so that is not ordinary church. That is not, but that is by and large what is going on in the world today. That is the way church is presented. That is the way the leaders are building it. And they don't even perceive it yet. So what's happening, I think, like Didier was saying, is there's a worldwide move of God that God is birthing through the apostolic right now 
to bring us back to the original intent that God had through Jesus Christ to empower the church to become kingdom-minded, not just localized in our thinking, but where we see the purpose of God that goes beyond every border, every denomination, and every structure, and every limitation of man. Now, I think the only thing we have to relate to to not come out of order with all that is we have to realize that God does appoint leaders. And there is a singular leader of every house, of every marriage, of every tribe, of every family, of every church. But the singular vision of that minister is not to control and contain, but to release and unearth the purpose of God. So if that senior minister over that work is connected to an apostolic ministry and anointing, he's going to get those other manifestations moving in his life or her life so that they can then not become the restrictor of what God's trying to produce in the people, but actually they're after it because they're connected to the anointing and they're bringing in help and they're bringing in people. And what they care more than preaching themselves is what is necessary for the people to grow. And so they're really not after week after week after week preaching, 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 preaching with one gift, one gift, one gift because you get one direction, one direction, one direction. But when all five gifts get brought in, what happens is the manifestation of apostolic kingdom anointing starts to occur and people start coming into fullness. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> um, this is crazy. Uh, Didi, how do you, like, the apostolic in Africa? So you're from the other side. How do, how do you see the apostolic networks working in Africa like, like this? Do you see that working like this? Do, is, this a, is this a worldwide movement? Or, I mean, God's worldwide, you know, he's, he's going to move. He's going to have his way. Um, but just from a, maybe a different, even like not perspective, but just another truth. I think we just need to come back to, you know, what uh, Paul did. It. Paul was an apostle commissioned by Christ. I mean, he was yeah. chosen and appointed. Yeah. by Christ Jesus himself. And that's how he introduced himself. So an apostle is a person that's appointed by God. Yeah. Okay, He's commissioned by God. And he's got a certain anointing on him Okay, to go and literally go and take territory. <laughs> mm. And not only to take geographical territory, territory but he's, when he comes into your life, He's taking territory for Christ in your life <laughs> yeah. by revealing Christ to you. You know, so if you look at Paul, Paul came into Corinth and he came into places, and what would he do? He would, you know, and something about an apostle or apostolic anointing, whatever the price, mm. to establish the kingdom. Yeah. I mean, they, there's no reason for money. There's nothing, another motive in it but to establish the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Paul, Paul would go into an area and he would just grow the, you know, dig out the foundations, and that's what apostle does. Apostle and a prophet, they dig out the foundation and they lay strong foundations mm -hmm. on which they will then establish the fivefold ministry which they called elders in the New Testament. That's what Paul did, putting the elders in place. And then because he would recognize the elders by the gift of the Holy Spirit, one is called an apo a pastor, evangelist, teacher. But a pastor hasn't been called to plant a church. An evangelist hasn't been called to plant a church. Mm. A teacher hasn't been called to plant a church. They are called to help build the church, but not plant the church. Mm -hmm. It's the apostle's mandate to plant a church, mm. to create the foundations, to pour the foundations to recognize what God is wanting to do, to put the elders in place, and to make sure that they do the commission of Christ yeah. and keep them connected to the head, which is Christ. So that's all over the world. And I, you know, that's why we get many churches from today. They're a mile wide, they're a mile wide, but they're inch deep. Mm. Because there's not an apostolic foundation. And so there's a lot of one-man Ministries going on. Yeah, sure. And they get burnt out, they're alone, they're isolated, and they get in trouble. That's not the way God has called us to operate. 
Apostolic ministry would put the fivefold ministry in place, and he would make sure that it, it's governed well. He's the leader, he's got the anointing, and he's called to be apostle. You cannot choose a person to be an apostle. God chooses that person to. And the anointing on his life, or on the apostle's life, will be recognized by the intensity. <laughs> because a person that's called as an apostle is normally a person that's intense. Believe me. <laughs> They're intense. And it's true. They are intense. And they literally fixated. They fixated with the commission of God. And believe me, they will bring disruption into your life because they've been called to bring disruption. That's the only way you can break, the, 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 uh, break up the kingdom of uh, darkness is to bring disruption and to, to literally, we're violent, violent, take the, the, the territories and the souls out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So the apostles work. Man, it's actually a dirty work. <laughs> I mean, you go and you dig trenches. You pour foundations. Yeah. You do the hard work and whatever the price. So it's, not a, it's nothing new. You just go back to the New Testament. You see how Paul did it. You see the, the sons that Paul um, um, raised up. And also then the fivefold ministry, the elders that he's put, he's put in place. And those, those gifts, just like, um, and those callings, just like Pastor Chris has said, you know, the church cannot grow into full maturity without those gifts. Yeah. We have to, you have to expose the full body of Christ uh, to those gifts. Because we're not running a one-man show. <laughs> we, are running, we, are, we are running the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, and we need to establish the kingdom of God according to God's blueprint, His design. You know, and you find that in the Word. So uh, there should be no other motive than to just to grow people, call and draw the calling of God out of their lives. An apostle will do that. He will do that. So you will feel very much challenged when you are in an apostolic ministry. Very much. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So how do you feel about being disruptive and... Ruffling one's feathers. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I think it's so cool that um, the last, how long were you in Syracuse for with the pastors there? Just recently, the Wednesday nights, was it 12 oh, weeks? Yeah, I, I think we did about four months or so. Four months. Four or five months. So, Like, so how do you see the apostolic affecting the structure of the churches as it relates to the, from the pastors to the congregation? So you just spent all these time with these, with these pastors as an right. apostle feeding into them, mm -hmm. you know? And so how are they going to go back and relate to the congregate members to get them involved into this fivefold? I just had a, a pastor come to me. He said, I'm interested in joining your network because... I know God showed me the next move of God's going to be a fathering network, apostolic in nature, and I see you have a fathering spirit, I do, and so would you be interested in allowing me to connect? And I, I says, yes, but I build only through relationship. I don't want a, an organization without a relationship. So if you want to build a relationship, I'll, I'll build a relationship with you, and we'll go from there. And I says, well, well he's what's the next step? I said, let's get together, have coffee, talk. So for a couple hours, we shared the word with each other. I shared a vision of what I see. And, and immediately, as soon as you start sharing apostolic vision, according to God's original intent, mm. what Paul taught, what Peter taught, what the apostles taught, it becomes very challenging to the soul of the person you're ministering to. They get challenged by it. And the pastor was like, wow, okay. And uh, he goes, all right, I'm interested. How do I join? I said, I need to talk to your leaders because if we don't have your whole leadership on board, it's never going to work. There's going to be a division between you and them and me and them or somewhere. So can we do that? So he brought all his leaders in, and there was um, eight of them total in the room. And um, then the pastor said, I know that Pastor Chris is going to stretch me. Well, we just had this discussion. So what happens is when you're leaving 
things you've learned your whole life behind and converting to what the Bible says and taking the, the Pauline revelation and applying it to yourself, it's challenging because all your traditions, your, your culture, your raised and all that stuff starts coming under the attack of the truth. The tr so if you think about it, you're substituting a quote-unquote Christian American idea for the kingdom of God. And the two do not match. Yeah. They hardly match. Uh, one is self-serving and self-centered. The other one is about sacrifice and honor and loyalty and doing God's will mm -hmm. at your own cost. And, and so these two are diametrically opposed. One's user-friendly and one is self-sacrificial in nature. And so as they hear that, it was challenging them. So, so he introduced me that way. And so I had the option, how do you, what are you going to say to these people who you've never met? And so I thought, well, I'm going to hit them with Revelation. I said, I'm just going to share some things from you, with you from the Word of God. And I just went, kabang, kabang, kabang. And I blew up about three doctrines. And I showed them what the Bible really teaches and what it really says. I said, look, it's right here. I, I want you to see it in the Bible so you can realize. And they sit there like, and I thought, all right, maybe I'm going to lose this whole deal. And... Uh, but really, the bottom line is to adjust the church to the foundation of Christ, to not continue in the culture of this world, but in the culture of God. Yeah. And uh, so as I begin to share, uh, at the end, I said, are we okay, Pastor? And he said, yeah, we're okay. I said, all right, I'm going to go around the room. How are you? How does this hit you? That's just two hours later. And the one lady, she says, wow, this is amazing. I can't wait to start. Let's start learning. It's like I just learned more right now in the last two hours than I've learned in a long time. And she was so excited. And the next one, same. And the next one, the same. Now, the, the next one, we got to him. He stood up and he goes, 75% of this is BS. I'm out of here. And he left. <laughs> I said, well, this is progressing good. We got three. We got one out. And I went to the, so they said, well, you know, there was, you know, don't worry about him. We love him. We're going to help him. So we went to the next one and the next one, and they're excited. And then I went to the pastor and his wife, and she said, oh, my gosh, I've had this vision since 1989. Oh, my gosh, here it is. This wow. is it. And she wow. wept and was excited. So I want you to know it doesn't come out, it doesn't come without confrontation and disruption. It does. Because what we believe that's wrong is going to be challenged by what God says. Because we're trying to connect people to God. Yeah. And the only way you can know the nature of God is to sacrifice the false image of him that you have. And then our life starts to become ordered. So uh, I think then you can see then by what I did there that by bringing the whole leadership on board, I'm working with the very leadership structure of that church's entirety so that I'm not causing a division between the leaders and the pastor. And right. so I think there's a strategy, there's a wisdom of how to do these things, and it works. And uh, so they're excited. They want to go forward. And they all said that we're in. This is it. Let's go. So yeah. I think that that's the, the key of how to, because if you have the leaders, you have the church. And yeah. I'm not interested in the church. I'm interested in them because I'm interested in the church. Right. <laughs> well, all right. Did that make sense? It's like, I'm not, it's not my business to mess with the people, they're under the authority of their pastor and leaders. But I, I care about them, so I have to influence these guys. And if I can help these guys get with the plan, those guys are going to get it. And so we, we don't want to circumvent the leaders. We want to work through the leaders to bring about permanent change. Yeah. Wow. So, so Dee, Dee uh, I when you said original intent, uh, Dee, Dee prophesied over you. Um, or he sent you a message, and a prophetic message, and it said, the Lord has ordered your steps and directed your life for an amazing season and surely a powerful movement. God is extracting his original apostolic plan and purpose at this time in the church. It will burst forth and will be made known. I think that is just so powerful that... Um, this, this thing we call kingdom is the original intent. Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah, like Pastor Chris said, you know, when a, a true apostle 
mm. that really moves according to and operates according to the mandate of God will not always be most favorable for churches out there, okay, because it will challenge doctrine, mm -hmm. okay. And so it's confrontational. So if you want the blueprint of God's design in, in terms of apostleship, you have to confront the system and you have to confront the blueprint, uh, the, the, the church as it is. So what I sense in my heart and what I see and what God has shown me what's happening uh, with Pastor Chris and Pastor Margie, actually Apostle Chris and Apostle Marge, because <laughs> they're moving as a couple, <laughs> Apostle, Apostle Chris. And with this beautiful couple, what God has anointed, that God has anointed, is there's a no compromise attitude in terms of what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. And they're just recovering and extracting, again, the old that has been established by by Paul and the apostles in those days, and bringing it again to the forefront. Yeah. That's, That's all. That's actually awesome. very simple. Yeah. But, you know, so, and, 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 it's, and it's awesome to see that there's a maturity to be able to do this. You know, to, to, to bring forth and to raise up leaders, to raise up um, people that has got a strong call of God on their lives, um, and to establish them in a position and in their calling so that they can be fully equipped for the work of the ministry. And so it's such an awesome privilege to be able to see this. Um, and you don't see this much. I travel a lot. I travel all over the world. <laughs> and I do see many apostles that's been called by God as an apostle, but I do s don't see many of them that, that's actually fathering people mm. while exhibiting and showing the anointing of apostleship on their lives. So many times it will be the project and the assignment that will be priority and not the development of the people. Okay, so many people get, there are many casualties. What I really love about Pastor Chris, the first day I met him, was he told me about how he's disciple, discipling people. It's awesome. Ha, man. The time he takes to disciple people on one-on-one, -on -one, or getting the guys around the table, pouring into them. You don't find that today. It's scarce. It's very scarce. And, I'm, and I'm, as I'm seated here, I, I can't think of really that I've encountered something like that. So it's just like you have tapped in this ministry into a flow of the Holy Spirit. And it creates a movement. And that's what, what's happening. When, you know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, Jesus said it will be like rivers of living water gushing out of your innermost being. And, you know, we are all the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are individually the temple of the Holy Spirit, but we corporately the temple of the Holy Spirit too. And so what's, what's happened in your apostle's life, okay, after a lot of prayer, <laughs> after a lot of sacrifice, after a lot of pressing in and really go and um, leaning into the Lord, he tapped into a artery where a mighty river is flowing in the Holy Spirit. And that is being released within the body, within this tribe. And it's starting to affect everyone. It's starting to anoint everyone. It's starting to saturate everyone. And so, you know, when that river keeps, when that river, it's, normally when a river starts flowing, it's just a little like a little stream. And then it starts to flow more powerful and more powerful. The Word of God says in Proverbs 21 verse 1, He says, A king's heart is like water in the hand of the Lord. He directs it wherever He wants to. So in other words, water moves. And so what happens is the stronger this river flows, and when there's obstructions in certain areas, that Water will just dam up, dam up, and it will become so strong and put so much pressure 
on obstacles along the way and will just burst forth. Boom, boom, boom. And that's what's actually happening in the spirit in this church, in this ministry. Because I'm not, this is a church with many locations, if I can say it that way. It's a movement. And that's why other churches will come to you, will come to this ministry to be part of it, because they experience life. They experience movement, not, not stagnation, but movement. Mm. Movement. And that's what the apostolic ministry does when it, when, it, when it grows and it expands and it taps into that flow of the Holy Spirit. And so you are so privileged to have an apostle like Pastor Chris. And what he stepped into needs to be honored, protected, yeah. encouraged, and you need to press into it like with everything you've got because you're going to be blessed. And I also sense something else. There's so much going on in the spirit in this stage, in this ministry. And there's so much that needs to be done. <laughs> there's so much that still needs to get birthed into the natural, but is already being conceived in the spirit. And it's like God is actually putting certain people, He's taking people like, you don't even know it, but Pastor, Pastor Chris has already seen it. That's what I see. He's already seen what he needs to do now, and he's actually already looking down five years down the road. But God is going to release finances over this ministry that will mobilize this ministry in an extraordinary way. Mm. Amen. So what I want to say is, listen, what I want to say is, there are people here that are, being f that are tapping into the favor of God just because they're applying the principles of God's word and uh, in regards to their finances, in regards to their um, dedication to the Lord, commitment to the Lord, what they, you know, they start serving well, okay? And you know there's a blessing in serving. And just because of this and because of the movement and the river that's starting to flow, when you do this, God, God's going to bless you far above your wildest dream and imagination. And God's going to use you as a channel to pour finances into this ministry because this ministry is not only called for this region. It's going to have a global impact. It's going to have a global impact. And I see it increasing tremendously to the north, but I also see it going to the south. But the, the first movement will be up to the north. Strong movement. And it will gradually move to the south. Okay? But it's a global ministry. So you need to understand you are part of a global ministry that's, that God is raising up just because someone is stepping into the move of God and wants the truth to be established. Because God only anoints the truth. He anoints nothing else but the truth. And, you know, God also blesses obedience. Not partial obedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. God blesses obedience. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Prophetic conference starts now. Wow. I love that. I love the, uh, the analogy you gave of the river, and it builds up, and then it bursts. So this question, this next question here, on this, like, this thought of bursting with the apostolic. Some people don't understand the apostolic because we've been taught for so long, there's the pastor, there's, you know, this is the way the church works. Like I was talking about the traditional church that's when I asked that question, you know. So how should the average person in the church expect to be affected um, as their fellowship connects with the apostolic? When that burst comes forth, uh, instead of like, I mean, it's going to be a surprising moment, you know. But what would you, what would you tell the people to ex expect and how to saddle up? Yeah, well, I think we, we have a good example already. Um, I was traveling up into northwestern Canada, and as I went into those regions, I started expressing the apostolic word there of the scriptures to the people, 
and some of it was shocking to them, mm. but they loved it, but they didn't even know what to do with it. And I went back again, and I went back again year after year, and you could see it starting to take root in certain places. And so what I saw, and this is what I think we gotta see about the apostolic, it's not important whether I go back there or not, it's important that they get what they need. Right. So I started looking at and analyzing what did they need. And I realized they needed the prophetic mantle wow. to come in and confirm and bring about a vision and a, uh, uh, the consequence of what they've received. Mm. So I, I called Andre and I invited Andre to go. So he went up there with Marge and I this past year. And um, Andre had called me. He says, well, Pastor Chris, I'm in North America. You're my pastor. So uh, what do you want me to do? Because I'm supposed to be at this other conference in the South with you, and then these other guys want me to go up there. I says, no, they need you up there. Yeah. And he goes, well, should I duck out? I said, I'll hold down the fort at this conference. You go up there. They need that prophetic mantle. I'm telling you something right now. It's going to bust something open that nothing else can bust open. So he went out of his way to drive three hours through the night to go minister on a Sunday morning, and three hours back and then fly out immediately to go back to South Africa. It's 12 hours journey at least from here to there, and then it's another 14 or 20 hours to South Africa. So add it up. So Andre had to fly, fly, fly. Yeah. Uh, so, but yet he was sacrificing for the prophetic mantle to land there. So when I arrived the next weekend, I, I arrived in the fallout that hit the people. Yeah. So they were like, wow. Now they got touched by the apostolic. They got touched by the prophetic. They already have a pastoral anointing there. And now they've experienced something in a unique way they've never experienced like before. And so what happened is it started expanding them, opening them up to kingdom activity and tribal expression, right? And it started managing. So then I ministered the whole weekend, and Margie ministered too. And then Sunday night, I decided to pray for everybody for the Holy Spirit who wanted the Holy Spirit. One-third of that church got filled with the Holy Spirit that night. Pastors' kids, ministers' kids, kids that all you would think would be full. They all got filled. There were young teenagers jumping and screaming in tongues. It was like a manifestation just went, bah, 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 bah. But I realized that would not have happened if the prophet didn't go in there and blow their stack. Because it says, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, my prayer to God for you is... Uh, he says that Christ might dwell in your heart, Paul said. So the first phase is the, the um, excuse me, the evangelistic anointing hits them that Christ dwells in their heart. That you may be rooted and grounded in love so that you, the teacher comes in and establishes roots in you about what's true so you don't drift away. And then that you might comprehend with all the saints, which is the job of the pastor to bring comprehension. It's not about you. It's about the whole body. And then it says that you might know the love of God that goes beyond knowledge. That's the prophet. They, they start speaking unthinkable things and prophesying, declaring over you ridiculous things because God sees more in you than you see in you, and it's beyond your wildest dream. And then the last thing he says is that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, which is the, the apostolic is concerned with fullness, the whole thing, not part of the thing. And uh, so you can see in Paul's prayer, all five ministries operating, and you can see in that church the effect of a greater expansion of the giftings producing kingdom. Yeah. Wow. So after the, the prophecy that you just gave, how would you, like, this, like the same question, um, what, would you, what would you recommend to the people to do? Well, you know, when uh, the Holy Spirit really starts moving and flowing, you know, there's uh, taking away of debris <laughs> mm. <laughs> and taking away of stuff and things that, um, that shouldn't be there. You know? So the stronger the flow, the greater the purity. That's good. And so, you know, external favor rests on internal purity. So... I believe that God is really calling his church to a higher stand of, standard of holiness. Not just because 
you know, it's going to be out of your works. It's just because it's going to be out of your dedication. Dedication to follow God. And that's what an uh, apostolic flow causes. It causes a, a dedication and a commitment because you really see God alive in your midst. And just like what Pastor Chris said now, now about Andre being here, which is a prophet, I mean, just look what happens, how the veil of people's eyes get taken down. Because when they get glimpses from the realm of God for their lives, it starts to ignite something within them. And then a holy fire comes on them, and things change. One third of the church being baptized in the Holy Spirit, man, that church will never be the same. Never be the same. That's transformation. Bang, boom. And that's exactly what happened. So God's transforming each and every person's life in this place. This, it doesn't, if you're going to just come to services on a Sunday, I promise you it's going to be so intense, it's going to transform you. It's going to transform you. You've been maybe coming to this church for 20 years. I want to tell you today, the next year is going to be so different than the last 20 years. It's going to be much more intense. It's going to be much more glorious. It's yeah. going to be greater revelations. Is going to be a greater move because this church is tapping into what God has for it. Okay? And it's because of the leadership. It's because of the apostolic anointing on this ministry. You need to understand that. You need to understand that. So God is establishing that as apostolic anointing in a strong way. Back to its original purpose. Back to its original purpose. And this voice will become stronger. This voice will become stronger. And I want to say that Pastor Chris will not necessarily have to go to churches. Churches will come here. And churches will come and visit. And greater conferences and more conferences mm. will be held in this place. So there will be an influx of people coming here. I also see the breaking through of, you know, uh, there was a Toronto thing uh, many years ago. What did they call it? Toronto Revival or something? The blessing, something like that, okay? But I want to say there's going to be outpouring of God's Spirit <laughs> in a tremendous, tremendous way. People will overflow from the Sunday to the Sunday. You will not run dry during the week. You will not run dry during the week. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some Christians go through life or go through, yeah, go, go through life just by filling up the their glass halfway with water. That's not the way God called us to live. He called us to live so that our glass will overflow, our cup will overflow every day so that we get rid of the debris in our lives. You know, if I leave that, that glass halfway and I have to put it away for a week or two weeks, when I look at the surface of that glass, it's filled with dust and maybe two or three flies. Okay? But if I keep pouring into that glass... Nothing can get stuck there. And this is what God is doing in this church. So I want to tell you, you need to press into the Holy Spirit like you've never pressed in before. You need to dig deep. Amen. And you need to let your, grows, your, your roots grow deep into the Lord. Amen. And so what I want to say is there's going to be such an anointing on your life that people that has become dormant in Christ, in other words, that has become lazy and passive in Christ, just at the scent of water, they will bud again, because you will be that saint in their lives. You will be that saint in their lives. So I'm very excited what I pick up in my spirit in this place. I'm very excited to what God, and um, I really honor your pastors. I, I honor them because of their willingness to love God this way. I, I love Jesus with all my heart. Man, I'm, I'm far from perfect, but I want to tell you something. I love Him with all my heart. And when I see people um, pressing into the Lord, that excites me. That gives, that gives me so much reason, you know, just to be here and to be part of what God is doing in this place. Yeah. So you're blessed. Amen. Thank you. Wow. So good. Okay. So we're over time, and we knew we were going to be talking with these guys. So do we have time for one more question? If you don't want to, you can leave. Because I want to know the answer. But 
I can see, obviously, the apostolic edge. I can see the prophetic edge. So this last question, I want, I want both of you guys to answer this question. Um, what do you see as the near and long-term effect of the apostolic influence on the church world? Yeah, go first. Okay, near term is going to be very disruptive. <laughs> it's going to be very um, um, challenging for many churches because the church cannot keep on life. It cannot hold. It will not hold. Um, uh, God is really bringing his church into a new era. So what's happening in, uh, in Binghamton and this area and in uh, pastors uh, Christendom's life and this ministry, God's going to birth it everywhere, okay? Um, doctrines are going to be challenged in every way, in every way. You know, God wants the truth. He doesn't want a doctrine. He wants the truth to be established. And he wants his church to be built on the foundation of the apostle and the prophet. That's it. That's bottom line. So near term, it's going to be disruptive, and it's going to be a shaking. Um, everything will be shaken out there. That's not the Word of God. <laughs> because there's only one thing that cannot be shaken, and that is the Word of God. So everything else will be shaken. Yeah. And then secondly, what will happen is there will be uh, true deliverance and true um, um, utterance of the Holy Spirit's voice will reach the world. The long term. So I really believe there's a, a huge harvest of souls coming into the kingdom because of the restoration of the apostolic. Because at the end of the day, God wants his people to know him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what God wants. He wants fellowship with his people. And each and every person walking on the face of this earth, I don't, know, I don't care if he's a believer or unbeliever, he's been, he's been created by God. And he's been created in God's image and likeness. And God wants to snatch them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And um, he just wants to bring them into the, their inheritance to, to walk into their blueprint design that God has for them. Yeah. Amen. So near term, disruption, shaking, restoration, long term, a huge, huge saturation of the spirit, God's spirit on the face of this earth. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, um, I remember years ago I was praying for the church world, just in general, churches, and I was thinking, Lord, how are we going to get this message to them? They won't even listen. I, I would talk to a pastor or a leader, and it would be like, close door, slam the door in your face. And uh, they didn't want to hear it. They thought I was a lunatic. And so I was like, uh, so I was on my face praying one day, and I was just like, God, you got to help me to convert churches. And then he said, clear as anything, he said to me, I am not converting churches. I'm building mine. Wow. And I was like, wow. I mean, that was a big shift. Everything I was aiming at, he just took away. And I stood there, and I go, well, what do you want me to do? And he didn't even answer. And then I sat there meditatively, and I saw pastors. This is years ago. And I saw pastors and leaders and churches getting on the kingdom bandwagon. They were joining God's work. And so what I know because of that vision and everything that God showed me that day, and I'm watching it happen now, he's not going into churches and converting them. He's not going to do it. They're going to have to abandon what they believe, and join what he's doing. And that is a marked moment. You can't just morph and say, all right, we're changing a little bit here. It's going to be a upright uprooting from a system which God did not create to a system which is based in tribal organizational kingdom activity. And they're going to have to lift out of that and move over to this. And I've, I've heard pastors now, because I want you to know, back then, the door was slamming in my face all the time. Today, I've not had one door slam in my face. Everybody I talk to is like, powerful. Their, their heart opens. Yeah. They're like, what? You just start sharing revelatory stuff right out of the Bible. They're going, well, yeah, but what about 
And it's not even no, it's what about, and then we share more scripture and more insight. And as the insight grows, their heart grows, and they immediately are like, how do I get connected to this? So I've watched this massive shift from that way to this way. It's moved 180 degrees, just like that. So also, I want you to know that God is actually granting us favor. And I'm thinking of all the other apostolic guys in this world or women in this world that are out there whom God's raising up that we haven't met yet. And, and even Didier, I mean, he has a very strong apostolic anointing on his life, you know. He goes prophetic real easy, but there's a real kingdom order, organizational order inside him. You can hear it when he talks. And so he's raising up people all over the planet. Uh, we just don't know them all yet, but we're going to hear about them too. And, and what I've noticed, what he's doing with us, which he's probably doing with them too, is like Corey became the first board member of United with Christ Canada. Because you can't ordain people in Canada, you can't marry people in Canada, or bury people in Canada. You can't do anything legal in Canada unless you are registered with the government in Canada. So you can go in a province of Alberta, or you can go federally. So it's harder to get federal. It's easier to get a province. So we, I said, let's go for the federal. No matter where we go, we can do it. Corey oh, good. went online, mm -hmm. took all our paperwork from here, and he loaded it, and in one day got approved. Yeah. One day. One day. Yeah. One day. I'm telling you, one day. He loaded the computer and sent it in, but before that day ended, he got approval. He called me up and he says, um, your apostolic network is approved in Canada. I said, what? And he said, he said, I just loaded in the information and they sent me the approval. So I'm watching God's favor open realms yeah. that are tough to open. Yeah. And uh, so, so these, so God's working with us because God wants to reach His people. He, it's in reality. I think what you said is very powerful, is that God is interested in His people becoming connected with Him properly, and that's what this is really all about. Fatherhood, we, you know, apostolic and fatherhood, they're like the same thing. Yeah. Apostle Paul was a father, and he was caring for a soul. So we, what do we know about fathers? Fathers have authority and fathers have love. If you don't have both, you're not a good father. Uh, but if, if you don't have love and you just have authority, well, your son grows up hating you. Uh, if you have love and no authority, your son grows up apathetic and unable. But when you walk in both accurately and healthy, what happens is the children come up under a strong anointing and they become powerful. And so God has a side to him that has to be respected. That's why the fear of the Lord will never go away. It's not the fear of hell. It's the revere of this awesome person called God. Yeah. It's like, wow. You know, that never goes away. And the same one who loves me is the same one who can destroy someone else who won't accept him, his ways. Because yeah. it's his kingdom. He's not going to have an alternate path. He has a path. So that's why we've been saying it's original intent of the Apostles is wall that matters. Everything else doesn't matter. Because it doesn't matter how much church is morphed over here, over there. The original purpose of God stands. The truth is unalterable. You can't change yeah. it. It will it'll it'll outlive every community, every tribe, every nation, every tongue, every person, everything, because it's truth. Truth can't be changed. And so God is his kingdom is lined with truth. And if you want to relate to him privately, you have to abandon the lie you believe and lay hold of the truth. Yeah. So as I lay hold of the truth, it changes the way I, I, I live. It changes the way I think. It changes my culture of my heart. And then the culture of heaven starts to own me. And I become a pleasure to God. And so if we can understand that he is altering a cultural position of the body of Christ so that he can be so powerful in them, they will be fulfilled and he'll be fulfilled. He'll have his people and, and uh, they'll have their God. It's really an amazing experience. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> wow, um, I used, you, you preached that last time here uh, a couple Sundays ago, that the truth is not adjustable. And I used that last week when, it, when, when I was speaking about relationships. And I, I think that's so powerful, that 
it's it, the truth isn't adjustable, and it's and when we stand on something that's not adjustable, it's the only sure thing that can't be shaken. So, thank you so much for tonight. Uh, this is this is an amazing sneak peek into the unveiling of the apostolic in the prophetic conference to come. I really, really appreciate everything that you guys have said. So, Father, we just thank you for tonight. Father, we thank you for this wisdom that's been dropped into us. Father, let us not lay it down. But, Father, let us pick it up and run with a tenacity, run with, with a, a, a fierce behavior about it, Father, that, that your original intent is going to be uh, not reinstalled, but established, Father. Your word is established upon our hearts, Father. We thank you that your truth is not adjustable. So, Father, we just thank you for this. We thank you for the wisdom that's been dropped. Father, we thank you for this prophetic conference to come. Father, we just pray blessing over Didier and Chris, Father, that you just bless them, Father, as they begin to speak over us for this whole weekend, Father. Every single meeting, I thank you that you're going to meet us, Father. That you have always met us. You will always meet us, Father. You'll never leave us alone. But, Father, I thank you that this whole weekend is going to be filled with wisdom, power. And, Father, we thank you for the ordination that's coming this weekend with Mark and Eve, Father. Father, this is such a rejoicing moment. Father, we thank you that we can rejoice and have fun, Father. Lord, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for that wisdom again, Father. We thank you for this weekend to come. Amen. Thank you.